I want to welcome uh, uh, Mr. Simple Simon. Could you come up here, please? Greg Godek. Good evening. Good evening. I, um, I write books, and um, many years ago I wrote a little book called 1001 Ways to Be Romantic, and um, I played that for a while. And then last year, with the help of my wife Karen, who you'll hear pretty soon, I found my true calling, and I now write life and business fables. That, uh, that teach lessons about life and creativity and problem solving. And as of a week ago, I did not know Wayne. All I knew was that he was bringing my wife in to speak. And, you know, you feel something, you feel the spirit, you get inspired. And I wrote a little story, and he asked me to read this to you. So this is a little story from the upcoming book called Brain Surgery and Rocket Science for Amateurs. The title of the story is Invisible. Simple Simon was in a hurry. He was late for an important meeting, but he had to return a movie to Blockbuster now or else play, pay a late fee. So he pulled his car into the parking lot. Dang, there were no open spots near the store. Simple Simon sighed. The, handicap, the handicapped spots were, of course, open. A feeling of resentment flashed through his head. But being a good person, he suppressed the inappropriate feeling. He focused instead on his search for a parking place. Geez, all I need to do is pop this movie into the return slot. Simon drove up and down the lanes of the crowded parking lot. He looked at his watch. He considered just leaving so he wouldn't be too late for his meeting. But he had now invested so much time in trying to find a parking place that he felt he should persevere. As he swung his car back along the front of the store, he spotted a car pulling into the handicapped spot. He almost wished that he had a handicap too, so that he could receive special attention. But being a good person, he suppressed that politically incorrect thought too. Then he saw something that made his blood boil. A perfectly able-bodied man got out of the car and sauntered into Blockbuster. Simple Simon muttered, no wheelchair, no crutches. No Cain. He shook his head. Some of us follow the rules, and others just flaunt them. And that's when his car was rear-ended. Simple Simon woke up in the emergency room. He tried to get up, but he couldn't move. It's only a little whiplash, said the doctor, looking down at him. You'll be fine in a few weeks. Simple Simon spent a week at home in bed, barely able to move. He consumed so much pain medication that he was worried that he was becoming an addict. He missed a whole week from work. He missed the company's softball game. And he racked up $14 in overdue fees at Blockbuster. When Simon could finally move about for short periods of time, his first outing was to Blockbuster. He gratefully pulled into the handicapped spot, carefully got out of his car, being mindful not to twist his back, and walked slowly toward the store. Simon smiled at a woman on the sidewalk, but she just scowled at him. Hmm, some folks just aren't morning people, I guess, Simon thought. When he returned to his car, a passerby eyed him with hostility and said, Hey, you jerk, those spots are for the disabled. But, but, was all that simple Simon could manage, as the man stomped away, shaking his head. During the next few weeks, simple Simon felt as though he had entered an episode of the Twilight Zone, in which, against his will, he had joined a cult of invisibly disabled people. People who were condemned to roam the earth with afflictions that were painful and debilitating, yet left them looking normal. Thus, they suffered persecution from the general populace. Most surprising to Simple Simon was the resentment directed at him from people with real disabilities, those with wheelchairs, crutches, or walkers. Thank goodness the blind people can't see me, he thought ruefully. One Tuesday evening, while sitting in the one comfortable chair he found at the local Starbucks, Simple Simon watched a young couple enter the shop. He felt a pang of jealousy at their easy, flowing movements. They just don't even appreciate their ability to move without pain, he thought. The couple sat down at a nearby table. The man read a book while the woman wrote in a well-worn journal. 
An hour later, as Simple Simon was leaving, the couple got up to go too. Simon held the door for them. The woman smiled at him, then suddenly collapsed. Simon instinctively reached out to break her fall. His sudden movement twisted his back and he too collapsed to the ground. This would be funny if I weren't in such excruciating pain, thought Simple Simon. The three of them introduced themselves in the cramped confines of the ambulance. I'm Simon, president of the National Whiplash Appreciation Society. I'm Sherry, so social director of the Multiple Sclerosis Anti-Defamation League. And I'm Wayne, able-bodied cheerleader for my wife, Sherry. The three of them quickly bonded. They shared a sense of humor as well as, as well as a sense of their shared dilemma. They became fast friends. Simple Simon learned that Sherry was a former dancer and model who once rode horses and lifted weights in her spare time. Then at the age of 27, while suffering through a common flu, she mysteriously became paralyzed. She was hospitalized and diagnosed with progressive multiple sclerosis. A year later, it was discovered she also had late chronic Lyme disease from a tick bite when she was 14. This combination of diseases had a devastating effect on Sherry's body, brain, and life. This formerly on-the-go woman now lived with severe nerve pain, bone-crushing fatigue, memory loss, dizziness, weakness, nausea, and migraines. And yet, you would never know it to look at her. The physical pain is bad enough, but it really hurts when people don't understand or respect what I'm going through, Sherry said one day. Just because I don't look disabled doesn't mean I'm not. Simple Simon nodded, stiffly but emphatically. Even though my pain is less severe in the short term, I know what you mean. People can be so judgmental and insensitive. Wayne nodded and added, just because a disability is invisible, that doesn't mean it's not real. I wonder how many people have invisible disabilities, Simple Simon mused out loud. A minute later, after consulting Google, Wayne answered, among the 26 million people in America with severe disabilities, 19 million of them suffer from a disability that does not require a device like a wheelchair, cane, or walker. In other words, from an invisible disability. Wow, that's a lot of people, said Simple Simon. And I'll bet they pretty much suffer alone. It might help them to know that they're in good company. Sherry and Wayne nodded. You know, Sherry, ventured Simple Simon, if you would be willing to share your journal with people, I'll bet it would help them. You're quite a good writer. Sherry blushed. Wayne nodded. Wayne began posting selections from Sherry's journal online. And much to their amazement, the word spread like wildfire across the internet. Emails started pouring in from people around the globe. These readers who lived in vari with various chronic conditions told countless personal stories of their experiences and challenges. They told of their isolation. They told of their frustration. They told of their difficulties in communicating the reality of their suffering. They told of the meanness of strangers. They told of the impatience of loved ones. They told of friends and family who said, get over it, or it's all in your head, or quit complaining, or try harder, or snap out of it. You know, observed Simple Simon, while many of these people have support groups for their specific situation, those with MS, or cancer, or arthritis, there's no support group for people with whiplash or various cognitive challenges or undiagnosed but chronic pain. He paused. You know, Simon continued, there's a broader issue here that isn't being addressed. The issue is about the invisible nature of all of these various afflictions, whether or not they have a specific advocacy group. People are suffering out there specifically because their problem is invisible. The public needs to be educated about this. They need their awareness raised. Sherry and Wayne nodded. We need an advocate, said Simple Simon. Wayne did a double take, then was silent. He then jumped online and grabbed the website address www.invisibledisabilities.org. Wayne had discovered his life's calling. Simple Simon's neck and back problems subsided, but his enthusiasm for the cause of invisible disabilities has not subsided. He carries a carton of booklets from the Invisible Disabilities Advocate in his trunk at all times, and he places them on the windshield of every car parked in a handicapped space. <clears throat> P.S. 
Wayne Cannell founded a nonprofit organization, the Invisible Disabilities Advocate, IDA, whose mission is to develop a better understanding of illness, injury, and pain. Ida maintains an extensive website, publishes the book, But You Look Good, lobbies for the cause, and sponsors a variety of educational programs. Sherry Cannell continues to write in her journal and to inspire her husband, Wayne, to continue the work of Ida. And this was just, thank you, a little thing that, uh, that I wrote. I, uh, I, I fictionalize real life situations and uh, sent it off to Wayne and Sherry last week and uh, edited it into this book. And uh, he invited me to come and share that with you. Thank you very much.